What is up, everybody? And welcome to the Real Talks podcast. My name is Mike Singletary. And I am Frank Chen, and we are going to be your hosts. And what we're going to do is break down what it takes to live life on your terms through entrepreneurship, specifically real estate investing. So we're going to hit it hard, the good, the bad, and the real, because that climb, as any entrepreneur knows, is never smooth. So let's get real. This is uh, Anthony and Candace Coffees, um, uh, faithful home buyers out of Kansas City. Uh, they are a husband and wife team, obviously, doing real estate uh, since 2014. Uh, faithful Home Buyers is out of Kansas City, Missouri. They currently own 45 rental units, flip 30 plus a year, use 100% OPM, which is other people's money, and take great pride in growing their investors' capital deal by ye- deal, year by year. And it's an honor to have you guys on. I know how hard this business is. I couldn't imagine doing it with my wife also, right? Because I think my wife and I would probably get a divorce. How you guys, how, how the hell do you guys do that? It's amazing. It's, um, it's, you're definitely right. It's, it's, it has its ups and downs. I'll just say that. It has its ups and downs. Um, you, uh, after a while, you have to respect each other's uh, positions inside the company, outside the company, and really have those. Uh, hard lines of like, hey, this is we're talking business, or we're talking, uh, or talking personal, or a daughter. Um, it took a while. I mean, we've had a lot of fights, and yeah. it was it got hairy for a little bit. But you know, we care a lot about our relationship and the business, and our daughter and our family, and we want to make this work no matter what. So we've had some tough conversations on what we want to do and what we want this to look like, and really um, had to. It's been trial and error, to be honest with you. A lot of it has just been like, don't bring work home because we do enough work at the office and we talk enough about work throughout the day. And I'm so, old, and I'm how, how do you do that? I mean, I mean, how do you do it whenever you're your business partner and you know what I mean, your life partner? I mean, how do you not talk about work at home? It's tough because that's all I want to talk about is work. <laughs> all I talk about is real estate. And deals. I'm sitting here like, let's talk about our daughter sometimes or yeah. what are, where we're going to go on vacation, maybe. So yeah. Like, Comes, I mean, Candace gets a lot of the praise because she's really uh, patient and um, sees big picture and loving and caring and, and lets me do what I got to do. So Candace really gets all the praise there for being an abs- absolute outstanding partner. Yeah. And um, so that's basically it. Having a responsible partner and uh, respectful and loving partner who understands what we're trying to do and create is big and key in life. Big, big, I, big. Dude, I, I 100% agree with you, man. I mean, I think that as a man, the one decision you got to knock out of the park is that your significant other, right? Yep. You got to nail that decision. If you nail that decision, then everything else is as easier. So obviously, looks like you did a good job there, brother. Well, <laughs> you know, the hard days, I mean, it's tough because if your spouse doesn't, it's this is a lonely, lonely road, right? It if is, man. Your partner isn't on, on board. It's just, a, it's just added pressure to the stuff they don't even need, you know? Yeah. So- if you have somebody who supports you day in and day out and sees big picture and can be patient with you. And has the same goals. And same goals. That's that's what's key and that's what's very important. So I think that was a big, big indicator, a big factor of why we are continuing to uh, see success in, in, in the marriage and outside the marriage as well. Not only that, we both bring something different to the table. You know, he's really good at numbers and I'm good with marketing. So it kind yeah. of goes hand in hand. Candace does really good with the branding, uh, the operation side of things. Uh, she set up the podium side of things. So, I mean, I, the company wouldn't be running without, you know, Candace's side of it. So I I highly respect what she brings to the table. And then me with my military background, um, bringing a team together, getting mission mission first, and underwriting the deals and, and keeping the train on the track. So we have a lot of value bringing uh, together and, yeah. uh, Separately, it would be top, it would be very difficult for us to do this on our own. Uh, that, that's awesome. So you have obviously distinct uh, roles, right, within your business. There's no, there's not a lot of co mingling. She's got her lane. You have your lane. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, I okay. couldn't do what he. Do, I couldn't do what he does, and I don't think he could do what I do. Yeah, and she also raised a lot of capital for the company too. People love her, and yeah. uh, she'll bring them to the table, and then I'll have the numbers talk and how we can best serve them as you know our, as their operators and they're our lenders so but i mean she brings them in with the personality and the looks and the people seals that. the deal <laughs> hey, you're the closer i get you man i guess you. you know what it's so cool because i've always talked to my wife like 
you know, she has her job and I always want to bring her in here. And she's always like, well, I don't want to work for you, Mike. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, you're not working for me. You're working for us. It's our company, right? I mean, yeah. uh, and stuff like that. So the, the fact that you guys are able to manage that, man, is it, so cool. Now, tell me a little bit about your business, man. What is, what is your, the structure of your business look like, looks like? So we are a real estate solutions based company. Our goal is to get um, the seller across the finish line. Hopefully it's advantageous for them to do business with us and profits the name of the game. But our, we generally care about helping these distressed sellers get them across the finish line. Obviously, we want to work out a deal that's fair and favorable for everybody. But uh, our customer is someone in distress in some way, shape, or form. Either the property is in heavy distress or the seller is in somewhat distress. So they could be facing foreclosure, probate, inherited, uh, squatters. Uh, bad tenants. Bad tenants. Or, uh, code yeah, I've seen a lot of those lately, right? I mean, yeah. I know I have been. Yeah, we're quite a bit. How about your team? What's that? What does that look like for you guys? We have some virtually and some in house. So I'd say overall we have about oh, it ranges between thirteen ish people overall, thirteen to fifteen, including decent camp. sized team. Yeah, and I'd say we have about five in the Philippines, the virtual assistants, five or six, and then um, we have three uh, in house uh, acquisition nice. managers, um, and then Candice and Lauren, and then uh, we have three lead managers now about to hire a fourth. Okay, and, uh, I'm we have CJ who does. And I'm currently looking to, I just fired my assistant. I'm currently looking to hire a new assistant. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll say it's to 12 to 15 people uh, floating in and out. And um, we just hired a, a part time CFO and then a transaction coordinating company to help help with all that. Are you doing, are you doing David's? David Oles? Oh, uh, uh, sit, um, easy REI closing, I think. What is it? Um, what's the name of that company? REI closing, EEC. Yeah. EC, EC. Oh yeah, I think it's that one. Sorry, David. I, I, I'm sorry, David. I butchered your <laughs> your company name, but I'll leave it on the lake. You know. Uh, so uh, let's talk about that, man, because you, you you're you have an operation, you have an overhead, right? But I, let's talk about lead for uh, lead flow. So, what does your marketing look like right now? We do a lot with our TV right now. So is that your yeah. primary? Yeah, right now that is our primary like source of our lead generation main, the main main bulk of our dollars yeah is TV, yeah. and then yeah. uh words as well because they kind of go hand in hand if you see a commercial you see a billboard it's like instant credibility the more people see you and the more in front you are with people okay um facebook we've done a lot of facebook things too but i mean facebook is kind of saturated for us so we kind of stopped that we do pc and seo so you know our paper clicks do really well as and then we do cold calling, a little bit of cold calling. But most of our leads are, you know, they're actually coming to us. So we're not doing a lot of outbound mm -hmm. lead generation. Most of our stuff is now inbound after we've been doing it for so many years. Yeah. So, yeah, we focus on easier leads. Yeah, we mainly want to focus on an inbound lead, inbound lead versus an outbound lead. But as Candace was saying, a, a bulk of our money goes to TV, uh, uh, billboards, PBC, and SEO. SEO. But we also have many other legions too. We still mail. Yeah, we, do, we do mailers as well to niche list. We have uh, company vehicles that are all wrapped and say we buy houses. So that helps. And then we have uh, signs in all of our yards that we own. So we have multiple um, lead channels, but the ones that we're focusing mo most on are those inbound. Yeah. And then we spend about uh, twenty to $25,000 a month on our marketing and ad spend. That's what I thought, man. I thought, I mean, because I know that, you know, I know how much TV costs uh, and, and people, I know how much all that stuff costs. I know you have a healthy, obviously a healthy budget there, um, but it didn't start that way. Nobody could, well, not very few people could start with just $25,000, right? How did you start and how did you grow that? So, <laughs> man, back in the day, we started Hello, Bats. writing these, paper, we were pen and paper writing, handwriting mailers and stuffing, and envelopes. stuffing envelopes every single night <laughs> oh. tv I, old school yeah. guerrilla marketing right <laughs> yeah so yeah we didn't we didn't know anything when we first got into this business we didn't know anything about real estate we didn't know what mortgage was or deed was and so we just blindly uh started doing this stuff and then we didn't even start um wholesaling until just recently so we did everything a little little backwards compared yeah. to what everybody else does you know because most people start off wholesaling and flipping or whatever but um, and then we started cold calling and I remember making cold calls myself oh, and wow. like yeah. trying to read these scripts, Googling like scripts to say and things and like butchering them completely. It was a mess. And then 
we got into we didn't have a crm no crm this no. is this no crm i remember, I remember taking phone calls <laughs> oh, you should leave we got her appointment. <laughs> that's so awesome man <laughs> God, we, and then we get a call and then dropping what we're doing go out to the appointment like no systems no processes no nothing just, just, just action and straight like, action everything yeah. like not leave <laughs> okay so that was well, okay you guys started that in uh 2014 right yeah it lasted it's obviously it's gonna be by 2014. 16. So 2014, we did actually start doing, uh, I started with my brother in a, for a couple, about two years, and then I bought him out, and then Candace came on board, but we were originally buying off the MLS and yeah. the auction. So right. I got my license back. And then we enjoy, we, then we started, uh, we joined Investor Fuel, and then we started seeing how other people were marketing, but I think we started doing some mailers before that. We did. And that was the pen and paper and stuff, and then we went to Investor Fuel, like, oh, okay, we got to get a CRA. We did, no, without. Yeah. We're supposed to like skip trace these lists that we were buying. Yeah, I was like, tracing. wait, what? I'm just mailing every single person on this list. <laughs> <laughs> this packing? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah. Fun. It was, I mean, that's awesome. You start like most people don't even start. Right. So you're just like, I'm just going to take improve your action. Beginning. Yeah. That's the thing is, I mean, we're, we weren't smart enough to know what we were getting into. So we're yeah. like, oh. So we're just naive and we just kept going. Even today, we just keep going and going. No, yeah. So I think a lot of people like that. A lot of any dollar that comes in, it goes right back into it. investor payouts yeah. or, or culture yeah. or marketing or tick tick, whatever. It goes right back out onto the Yeah. Right <laughs> that's that's so I mean, first off, it's super impressive. You know what I mean? Uh number one. Uh the ability to like just, you know, I actually actually have to do I do have a question from back there. Did you have a job that you were doing this as a side gig? Or did you I just did. dive in? Okay. I, I worked so I was working up until I gave birth to our daughter in 2016, um, he would be working in the basement. Like that's where his office was. Yeah. And I would go to work and I, I would work at a broker's office for um, Century 21 at the time. And I was like a personal assistant for him. And so I was learning the business before I got licensed. And so, you're, also, you're also a leasing agent too at an mm -hmm. apartment complex. Yeah, I so also was. She had a little bit of real estate. Mm -hmm. All right. So you had some money coming in, not completely dependent upon the real estate thing. Obviously, yeah. you got out. Did you just get out of the military at that time, or you were you yeah. out for a little bit? Okay. Yeah, I was, I was out of the military. I had a little bit of uh, military. My so my salary. I saw I saw like eight months of military salary coming in. So yeah. I had some income coming in, not much, but yeah. my brother let me stay in the basement. So I was living on a mattress in the basement. I yeah. spent all my money on an education program to learn this. To learn this stuff because I, I didn't know anything about real estate and so, okay then why real estate well why was it this it was because yeah. I was going back to the power lines well i just knew real estate it, you know when i was a younger child um like my fantasies and stuff like that were always you know having a living making money not doing manual labor and it was i never knew i never tied it to real estate but it was always me work making money off of a, working in front of a computer not trading my time for money type deal like doing deals right and then I knew real estate. You hear people talking about real estate. All the, everybody who's a million, millionaire is, is a, owns real estate. So, oh man, real estate's a great thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, having something tangible you can actually touch. That was another thing that I, would, I really liked. And so everybody's always going to need housing. So I was like, man, this is a great vehicle to get into if I can just master, if I can just solve some problems on this, on this, um, on this, on this real estate line. Then we can make some money. And it took years and years and years how we can actually see our value in the marketplace. It's a lot. Because when you first start out, you just got to buy houses as low as possible instead of trying to think about your customer and your sellers it's and your lenders, house. everybody you're doing business with trying to create a win-win opportunity. So it took us a long time to uh, to figure out our value. But I just knew real estate um, was the vehicle. Uh, what, you financial got, freedom. A, a financial it. freedom. Because I just always hear people talking about it. And it's like, okay, so I just don't write all in. That's how that's how my mindset is. If I, if I do if I, uh, start something, he's 100% yeah. In invested and he is going for it no matter yeah. what There's i love no that about you that's why we always got along because i'm the exact same way and i i, I had the same thing here's what here's the thing that i dealt with i think that most a lot of people deal with is like we jump in thinking that this is going to create financial freedom for us but then we create a job like a, a hard demanding stressful as hell yeah. job yeah. you know what i mean that you're like and then when you're in it you're like oh you know, how do I get myself out of this, right? I mean, stuff like that. Did y'all have that experience too or no? Yes, I tell them every day. I have to remind them, babe, well, we got into this business to have more free time and to work less, not work more and not see each other. It was tough. Like last year, last year was really tough with the market shifts. Um, I couldn't keep a team really. 
um, the acquisition managers weren't doing anything. Where inventory was stacking on, I had to, I bought too many heavy rehabs. Yeah, you know my holding costs were there. Uh, my expenses were just I was spending more money was going out than coming in, and so, so stressful too, dude, it was stressful. I was so doing stressful. I was doing six seven days a week. He would be in the office from seven to seven seven days a week. And I, but I mean I have a fiduciary of responsibility to our lenders, and so I can't let any of these units slip. Of course. So, it's just it was just one of those deals, and like I said, we had to go through that uh, pain period to get to where our net to get where we're at now. Yeah. But yeah, I mean we're, we're we haven't made it out of the clear yet as far as like hey we got our time back and we still got to do this because we're still training a team and we're it, still chipping away at that. <laughs> still chipping away at that. Well, everybody's chipping away, man. It's just our you point. know different levels, right? Yeah. Right. Our goal in the next eighteen to twenty four months is hopefully we could get uh, a good chunk of our time back and the uh, the operations running. Uh, pretty smoothly by itself and a solid team with little touches here and there i mean there's a couple of things i want to touch on that i mean one you're not the only one six i mean actually it's, it's going to be like 10 months ago now because in july when the interest rates went up you know through skip force we saw a, a dramatic shift with uh investors right they just cut off you know buying spending all this other stuff houses were getting more difficult to purchase right because obviously uh there's that perception gap where we knew the value of the house dropped but the seller still thought that the value of the house was back well, you know two years ago so a lot of people i mean a lot of people myself included was having problems at that time uh, uh but you know the thing is you guys found a way out of it or finding your way out of it which is unbelievably impressive because so many people have quit you know so kudos to you I think uh, this is by doing it backwards because if we started wholesaling first we may have not been in the situation that we were in last year but you know switching our business to more of wholesaling now has helped us like the cycle of money is huge guys that's 100 percent. because so, i was just like you i started flipping heavy flipping and man the, the capital intense it was it's it's unbelievable and then once yeah. you have wholesale checks come in you're like what am i doing <laughs> yeah you know? yeah yeah so now it's it's great because you actually can know you make more money on the no. So if you know, if you say no to most majority of your deals, you know exactly what's going to make you money. Versus me, I was buying all That's over because they make money. they make sense on paper. They underwrote good, but yeah. log logistically speaking, of getting that that unit to market, it was just a nightmare. It was a headache. You know what I mean? So the project went from that. Well, what was your biggest takeaway from that period of your uh, time? Is is having exactly knowing what you want, when you want, and how you want it. Um, Exit strategies, knowing knowing your exit, exit strategies, strategies, being more conservative on your what you think your product's worth, and having uh, ha having built in extra costs on your rehab. Um, did you work on a percentage basis though? So, like, say you used to buy the house at seventy percent minus repairs. Did you drop your percentage by box, or what did? Yeah, you yeah. So we started buying. I mean, we were buying um, typically at seventy minus repairs, normally no, uh, minus like everybody else, uh, but we dropped it to sixty to sixty five minus repairs. Um, and then we bumped up our construction construction numbers, and then we stopped doing uh, full full gut remodels until we got our current inventory of remodels done. The uh, only like, thing that we were doing heavy, like the heavy remodel at the time, was our eight flights. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we just uh, adjusting from you know just learning the cash conversion cycle, dollar in versus dollar out. Hey, this is an easy rehab versus heavy rehab. This is going to be a quick two three week rehab versus a eight week rehab. So being smarter with our liquidity position. We stick to more limited flips now. <laughs> yeah, that, that's so smart guys. And, and and whoever's listening, you gotta, I mean, that's so, so important to understand your runway, your money runway, cause it'll dry up really quick and there's nothing worse than that. You know, the feeling of that. So uh, unbelievably smart. So we have a couple of segments here, man. Uh, one is called humble brag. What is it that you're doing uh, right now or have done or are working on that Man, just you know that you could brag about that you do better than anybody else, or you're excited about. I, you know, I I take great pride in um, getting these sellers to the finish line, working with our team, coming up with creative solutions that are win-win opportunities. Uh, we do a lot on the creative side with these sellers. You know, pick them up on subject two, and if they're really trying to get a retail um, retail sticker price out of it, then we can give them retail offer if they give them a timeline. So uh, we structure a lot of deals with a subject two of the seller carry back. Um, where we're bringing we're bringing little with uh, little to no money down to the table, and we're acquiring acquiring these properties with little to no money down. So I take great pride in buying pop, uh, properties just very like creatively. just like that, very creatively. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we 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 love that. I think that yeah, I think that would be the biggest 
And then also, I mean, we were also providing seller financing as well. Uh, we're controlling uh, these units, a lot of these units. And so I don't want to hold them as long-term and take care of the uh, capital expenditures and maintenance costs and stuff. So we'll wrap them on the backside or do lease options on the backside. And just these type of deals, I just love, you know what I mean? So it wasn't being creative. Yeah. Are you are you the one that does the creative deals or your AMs? Are you able to train your AMs to actually structure the deal? I train the AMs to structure the deal. They'll everybody should know how to. Yeah, they'll they should, some people have a hard time with it, right? Or they can't see the deal when it's there because there's so many different ways to actually make the deal happen, you know? And so basically run like on creative deals, so everyone needs to know how. Well, so you, have a, you have a obviously you have an edu- or do you have an edu- how do you educate your your AMs? To, I mean, just buying it at the right number is good enough, but going through that, that, you know, lineage of how to, when the deal works and makes sense. Well, what was that yeah. look like for your business? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm ex-military, so we believe in cross training. And so if someone falls out, someone would be able to call in and be able to take it, take it over. So, um, they're, they're not subject matter experts, but they know how to put the pieces together. And so, um, our biggest thing over here at Faithful is we we uh, we dive into the four pillars. Uh, the biggest thing is why why is our seller selling, and so we really dig into that in the timeline. So we we come in there, we fig- figure out what tool works best for them off of their timeline and their wants and their needs. Obviously, our goal is buy as with cash as deep as possible. But if that doesn't fit them, then we really start tearing it up and see what product fits them that we still. Uh, do business with them we want to solve a problem so what are, we're a solutions company so we always let everyone know like the problem that they have we want to be that one buyer for them so when when the acquisition managers come in and bring a deal yeah. they will have a general idea of hey i think this is what exit we should do but they they're bringing me the the what the why and the when and i'm coming up with they're not pulling the trigger on their own without it I'm, I'm, the fin- I'm the final underwrite. So, oh, really? I'm, you have to look at every deal before they actually go in and yeah. go and execute this. Well, they'll they'll uh, we'll have daily touches and stuff like that. Yeah. We'll work it, but yeah, they'll lock it up and then, or before they lock it up, they'll come up to me and say, hey, "This is what I'm thinking." But our conversations are typically one to three minutes, so not long. We just so, want to know the four. They're quick little touches, quick little here and there, quick little adjustments. But yeah, I mean, they they have the, they know, and they're getting better day by day, rep by rep. But yeah, the goal is for them to have the autonomy to see the gap, create the value, and close these deals and create profit. They're still learning. So, I mean, sometimes Anthony will just tell them, you know, hey, we got to come back and we need to take some more off that deal. So, yeah, I I mean, that happened. Learning curve. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, um, you know, AMs have always been my problem. Like, I I don't know about, yeah, it sounds like you guys probably have a better dialed in. My AMs has always, I had the great ones I can only keep maybe a year and a half or so. Uh, or they'll go on their own, which is fine, man. I'm an entrepreneur, so I, I, I dig it. You know what I mean? Uh, or the ones that stay with us uh, and they're just not good enough and they need a lot of handholding, right? <laughs> and so how do you guys get over that AM turnover uh, cycle? He is really quick to be like, I don't think this person's going to work out after like the first week. And he's gotten so much better over the years by like, I think he's still too new to like, say if he's going to last or not. I think they're still too new. They're still too new. So he actually feels them out for a while. It was 30, 30 days. So you really know if someone's going to work out. It's a day by day process. I mean, we've started, uh, we hired um, an app on a third party company to do the onboarding for us. War Room Operations, Travis Kelly's company. So every, every new hire, they do the, they do the predictive index assessment and they do the onboarding. And then um, I'm a big believer now in having, um, the multiple acquisition managers because if you have one, I forget who said it. If you have one, you have none. Uh, you need two to keep them keep them honest. I and I, I think you need three. So if some, if what I agree that you can't keep them forever. I one does fall out. I'm trying to, but I'm trying to create a culture where they last forever. So we have bonus programs, we have synthesis programs. Like gonna, we're going to create an equity share program. So my goal is to create an organization where people can make six figures every year. Um, they can, if they want to grow their own rental portfolio, we have that option too. I mean, there's, there's no reason why somebody wouldn't want to leave making six figures a year. They have the autonomy, have the decision-making come and go as you please, as long as you're hitting numbers. That's what we're trying to create over here. We give them their leads. They're not out like trying to go look for them themselves. Mm -hmm. We provide the lead, we provide vehicles, we provide health insurance and medical, all that stuff. So fantastic. Yeah, but I mean, it costs a lot of money. But the goal is to create a culture and environment where people want to kill for you day in and day. 
And we're also very brutally honest and transparent inside and out with the numbers. If it's up, if we're up, we're up. If we're down, we're down. You know, we're a team. Uh, we don't consider the hierarchy of like, hey, I'm better than you. Everyone's we all work playing together. field. And we're all, it's all mission first. So um, that's what we're really trying to strive for is a team, team effort. And um, missions always comes, always comes first. I love it. Your dream is big enough for other people to have their dream in it, right? Yes. So let's talk numbers real quick. I'm going to put you on the hot seat on KPIs. Is that okay? Are you? All right. All right. All right. So simple KPIs, simple KPIs. What's your cost per lead right now in, um, in TV? Uh, cost for lead and TV, uh, we got to break our leads and leads and yeah. down, but I mean, we're spending our last investor fuel, uh, quarterly numbers. Actually, let me pull those up. He wants to be as accurate as he can. It's okay. Yeah, you could definitely be. Cause we, it was in you our could always round up. You could always be like 200 ish or something like we really that. really need to get better at our cost per lead gen, but TV is like, I mean, all of our deals are TV. And you know what the hard part about TV is really coming in with that cost relief because they could always come in through the website after the TV, yeah. right? I mean, PC is like shot up because of it too. Because when they see like our billboard or our TV commercial, you know, most people grab their phones and immediately Google you. Yeah. And that goes to your, you know, your PPC and like your website and but I've been able to see the correlation in that, that when that uh, that TV ad ran that, you know, what are your PPC t- uh, um, uh, hits or views? So tracking, yeah. So different tracking numbers. So if that lead um, calls in from our TV. It's a TV phone number. And then if they go to our website mm-hmm. and call us from our website, then we're like, OK, well, they got a hold of, you know, our lead manager who's going to ask them, how did you hear about us? And they're either going to say, oh, I Googled you or, oh, I, you know, saw you on TV and like went to your website. So that's all the way of really that we can like calculate it. We need to, I got the numbers here. We're not, we don't have our lead gen broken down for KPI, but our overall leads. So what's your call right now? Yeah. Uh, Q1 for Q1 to 2023, we spent about 77 grand. Uh, cost per contract is around $3,000, $3,300. Uh, we had about 23, 23 contracts in Q1. That's pretty good. So, I mean, what? So, you're wholesaling. What's your average on wholesaling right now? Um, again, we're still uh, clearing clearing some numbers, but I would say our average wholesale um, fee is probably fifteen grand. We don't. We're not. We're not really ranking it in, but we're doing. We'll at it. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, that's. I mean, I think the average is around that fifteen to twenty, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty much where the average is. Anyway. Goes, it also goes back to what we're trying to do: create a longevity of, of relationship. So we're not going to make it or break it off one deal. Sure. And so we want everybody to have a win off our deals. And so, um, just like any other business, you're going to get the most business is your repeat customers. Yeah. And so I'd rather have a oh, repeat okay. customer day in and day out. Do you have repeat customers here? Because I very rarely have had a repeat customer. You know, uh, we have people who buy with us multiple times multiple before, times. but that's that's yeah, that's the culture and idea we're they trying like to create. Deals. Oh, you're talking about on the buyer side, on the disposition yeah, on side. The I got, I got you. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I thought you were talking about on the. Uh, I'm saying on the disposition. I thought you were talking about on the buying side because very rarely do I buy from the same person multiple times, unless every once in a while you'll get like a referral or a neighbor or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, cool, man. So I'll tell you what. We have this other uh, segment called a storm, and so uh, it, what that is is like, hey, anytime it doesn't have to be real estate specific, right? Because we're all growth mindset individuals. I think we can have to be, if you're going to put yourself in this, in this, you know, incubator of stress, right? So what is a big problem or storm or time in your life that you're like, man, I don't know if I could get either any lower or a bigger problem. And how did you get out of it? And what'd you learn from it? Well, um, starting that it's been this whole business as this whole journey or business has been a journey. And yeah. I've had a few times where I just want to quit. There's probably two or three different times where I just want to turn. Uh, I want to quit all the time, man. I get it. I like no money, like the bank accounts were dry. But I, um, but I put myself in such a deep position. I'm not the guy to just quit. And so, but there was times, there's two or three times where I wanted to quit. But I, to our investors and to our lenders, I, just, I like I said we have a fiduciary responsibility. I'm not going to just do that. If it was just my capital, then I was like, yeah, it's, it'd be probably too easy to just like, give it up. But I gave my word and uh, everything is secure to our investors. I want to make sure everything is plus my word. Like I, my, my whole life is my word. So um, it was been very tough, but 
you know, I was listening to uh, Tony Robbins uh, speak one time and he was saying it's not about resources, it's about being resourceful. And so that stuck with me. And so it's just, uh, you know, the more hands you shake, the more money you make. And so it's just going out there and shaking more hands, meeting new people. Getting uncomfortable, getting, but getting comfortable being uncomfortable in front of different, you know, people. It was really dropping the pride and the ego thinking, hey, I could do this by myself. You know what I mean? And it was just having a reality check that, hey, you need to figure this out more and better and you can't do it on your own. And um, But again, it's, it's lonely. You know what I mean? It's just you don't know what you don't know. And, you know, I was willing to money. Money is like fake to me. Right. It's just a. It's out there. I know it makes the world go around. You got to have it. You got to use it. But that's not what I wake up for. That's not what I what I'm striving after. It's not a number in a banking account. You know what I mean? We firmly believe uh, uh, relationships over profits. And um, but money's the tool. We're not dumb. You know, you got to have money to make the world go around and and pay bills and all that stuff. So we're trying to have that mixture of of, of just that and still have a good culture. But the store was just running out of money. We ran out of money. Year. We ran out of money many times. I mean, like I said, buying. Buying too much, buying too much inventory. Couldn't could have turned it fast enough. fast enough. Our whole team quit on us at the same time. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. I don't know. We're gonna talk about that. <laughs> oh my god! That was a storm. We've had uh, that would be a short storm. Yeah, I mean, we said because we have all these lead gen comes in, you know, and then yeah. people quit. You know, people are good until they're not. We're trying to create a culture where people aren't going to quit, and we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Honesty and transparency is the best way to go, but we're still, go we're still figuring it out. He had to go out and start walking properties again. Like we came back from Investor Fuel yeah. and our AMs are gone and we're like, oh, so we we actually walked a few properties together. I remember that week and I was like, well, the positive, we got a whole bunch of footage for marketing. It was it actually, <laughs> it's how it happens. I mean, because it's happened twice where one person will quit. And then it just, the, it just trickles down. What happened? What do you What do you think happened there? Why would everybody have a walkout? I have a passion for. Well, our last the last one that happened was our acquisition manager. Um, I didn't hire him through predictive it, or didn't have him do the PI score, so I didn't vet him correctly. Um, he had no background, and then he short answer was he did not. He was not comfortable having uncomfortable conversations. He, which so is terrible for an AM. It's the worst thing for him. He was he was yeah. he, did, he did very well. He just it didn't go with his core. And it just wasn't with them. And then my assistant at the time. They were uh, friends. They were friends. And they, they formed a friendship inside the office. And <laughs> that's that. Which so. one went, the other one went yeah. out of town. So it was great to come back in town. And Oh, my God. That was unbelievable. Well, okay. So what's the biggest lesson you learned from that? Um, hire a third party to do your well, interviewing yeah. on mm. Hire outsource pre screen qualified, disqualified. Don't time. say, I mean, really value your time more. Don't try to do everything yourself yeah. because for the longest time, we were trying to save a couple bucks and not hire anybody and do it ourselves. And you know what I mean? Turnover so over was just the turnover is turnover is just too much of a killer for us. We could be so much further ahead now yeah. if we didn't, didn't have all this turnover. Yeah. And we've got, but again, it's at the end of the day, it's all our fault, it's all my fault. I'd rather you take responsibility and ownership for it. And, and, yeah. I mean, no, it's always the other thing. <laughs> but we're, we're the one who put these people in the positions. We're the one who's setting them for failure or success. Yeah, you put them in the wrong seat. I, I do it. I've done it. We've all done it. Because we didn't really have um, like a good training um, at that time. Like we didn't have anything in writing. We didn't provide like a workbook or no SOP. Yeah, no. nothing. No mm-hmm. system. So we actually. We're like, okay, well, we're failing them from the beginning. Right. So we need to get our butts in order and get these documents and, you know, teach them. Like, this is what a funnel looks like. This is what a contract looks it's like. It's really humbling. I mean, because- It's super humbling. I completely get it. Because I think most people that do this are, you know, visionaries. They don't have things like SOPs dialed in. I'm not that person. I got to surround myself with people like that, right? Yeah. So I think that what your story does, though, is highlights- what other people are going through and the ability to just hunker down and get through it like you guys have is really inspiring. Yeah, I wish we would have like put our systems and operations on paper when we first started, like, you know, really honed in on how to pull a list and what you need to do, where you get it from, how much it should cost, what kind of list we buy and then have that as a training and then, you know, for our AMs, you know, our folders, what goes in that folder, what Anthony's looking for when you're walking a property and how to walk a property and things like that. I wish we would have had those 
you know, systems in place when we first got started and hiring people on. Yeah, I mean, I know we I know we've all heard this because I mean we started doing it uh, uh, years back where we'll just videotape everything and then have it transcribed, right? I literally hired somebody to be full time on our staff just to create SOPs. That's what they did. Let's create SOPs. Like they'll take the videos, they'll make it you know look nice, all this other stuff, and they'll follow a, an employee along and and like write down every single thing they did and some of that. So uh, I did that with the virtual assistants when we first got started. I was like, um, I have no idea how any of these oper systems were using work. So I started hiring like virtual assistants to learn like these programs. Yeah. And then I would say, make a video of you doing it and explain it to me in your video. Like you're teaching me how to do your job. Yeah. So I would have that video and then I would say, great, do you want the job? Now that you made the vid like training video and you know how it all works, do you want the job? I would offer that, you know, them the job. It's and a then great that, training process. It was really good. And it still works to this day. Because yeah. in general, if they decide no, they don't want to take the job, I have the training to give it to somebody else who would want the job. And if somebody else, you know, say we hired someone and they ended up quitting, I still have that training for yeah. somebody else I didn't have to do and waste, you know, a lot of my time would turn over and turn over and turn over and yeah. get training. Well, I mean, you killed a couple uh, uh, birds with one stone there, man. I mean, so what you did is that you, because whenever you're hiring VAs, for both of those that don't know, you put out an ad and you get like 200 applicants. Now, most of those VAs, they're, they, they're, they're putting out ads everywhere. So what you want to do is have some type of filtering system to get somebody that's serious. And that's what Candace just did. So that's super smart. We had like a three-step screening system too. When we were hiring virtual assistants, it was, they had to do the predictive index or at the time it was Tony Robbins yeah. one. Disc. Yep. Disc. And then they had to like say our script over the voiceover so we can hear how they sound because I'll, you know, in our, in our ad, it's like have to speak English clearly. American to sounding mm -hmm. accent. Mm -hmm. And then they would have to send me over like that as well with their application and everything. So there was like steps that they had to do in order for us to look at them. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Last question, guys. If you had to do this journey over again, what would you have changed? I would say um, link up with somebody, cut the pride, cut the ego, take massive action, link up with somebody who's a few steps ahead of you, add value to their life and see how they can, you can learn fast track of the business, the do's and the don'ts. Um, I would say... Uh, Trade your time for money until you have enough liquidity built up or built have relationships uh, for the liquidity positions to buy the units you want. But wholesale probably for, I would say probably wholesale first um, and then hold what you can. Uh, we, are, we, we are in a good position because we held a lot of our units uh, years prior before the market shifted and we were able to cash out refi multiple times during that five years, that five year span. Yeah. So our, our equity position is good. Uh, but I would say wholesale to start out, uh, relationships over profits, and just keep taking matters. Do your SOPs. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, guys. Thanks for this, man. So where can they find you guys? Uh, on social media would be Facebook, Instagram, email us. Uh, so put your handles on, on, on the show notes for sure. But uh, but yeah, definitely definitely link up with them. And hey, they're they're... They're moving to shake in the KC, man. They're killing it. Also, with again, we're 100% OPM, other people's money. So if you got yeah. there, you want to park your capital on some first or second yeah. position real estate, we have he heavily discounted real estate that uh, we get tied to. We're always looking to build um, our private lender relationship. So if anybody wants to put their money in the Kansas City market, we're your operators. Yes, That's yeah. awesome, man. And you're, you know, you're, you're faith based off, uh, operators and you know, you're a man of your word. So oh, I'll have to put money with you. <laughs> yeah, All right, man. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we want to do cool stuff with cool people. I mean, we want to help people out, provide jobs, provide housing, and you know, enjoy life, man. Life is too short. Yes, it is. It is. Awesome, guys. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, until next week, guys. Peace out. Thank you, Rabbit. Bye. Bye. All right. <laughs> so that's a wrap. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you received value from this episode. If so, please share this podcast with your friends so we can help more people just like you. Also, hook up with us on Facebook, IG, and YouTube at Real Talks. That's R E I L Talks. So, until next time, keep it cool and keep it real.